Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jules, if you're new here, welcome. This video is gonna be a little bit different. I am pregnant with our next baby. So this is our, technically our second baby. We did lose a baby in between this one. So we have one son, his name is Ryan James. You might have followed that journey on YouTube during 2020. He's doing well, he's now two years old and a toddler. And then we got pregnant and lost a baby in May of 2022. I was about like eight, eight or nine weeks. I was nine weeks. And then we started to expect again, blessing from the Lord and we're so excited. And I started to film a video for that and I might even insert a clip here, depending. Um, but the video, I just didn't really like the lighting and how it turned out. And now that things have kind of progressed in different ways that I wasn't expecting, I thought I would do like kind of a summary video and tell you a little bit of what's going on with the second pregnancy. It's a baby boy, so baby brother is coming in, well, he's due in March, but he's probably coming in February, and a little bit more about his journey. So I'm excited to tell you a little bit more and get into it with you. Okay, so like I said, we're having another baby. It's a boy. I am, do you see the belly shot? I am um, 30 weeks on Thursday this week, so I'm pretty far along at this point. Um, I think for a difference between my last videos with my previous pregnancy and this one is that I'm gonna do like a trimester tip video at some point, telling you about first trimester tips, second trimester, third, that kind of thing versus like week by week. So here's baby boy. Baby boy is doing super well. You're gonna name him Brayden Christopher. So Brayden, we just both really love that name and Christopher is my husband's brother's name. And for our first son, Ryan James, we chose his middle name for my brother. So, and my grandpa. So we're really excited about him. He's doing really well. So I wanna start off the video by saying that he's doing super well and he's completely healthy, praise God, and everything is going good with him. But I do have little notes here. I wouldn't be myself if I didn't have notes. To kind of recap a little bit about something called vasa previa so i've done my research on youtube and i found about four videos total on all of youtube about women that have had vasa previa i found a couple of blog posts a couple yeah i think it's mostly blog posts that i found of people's experiences so i thought it'd be really cool for me to instead of being one of the kind of like scary videos about vasa previa if this happens to you because it's super rare I'd rather be a voice of encouragement and be there for other women who experience Vasa Previa because it is so rare and it, you know, is happening to me. I feel like it'd be fun to share this journey. It'd be fun to share tips along the way of things that are helping me, um, whether it's mentally, physically, whatever. Um, I'd like to be a voice of help and encouragement with this and also to document it so that I can look back whenever a baby is here, God willing and healthy and safe. So. Okay, so with my notes here, I had a pretty decent first trimester. I did get really sick for about um, three, four weeks, um, which was pretty rough, but I would say I was pretty sick overall, nauseous, but that's to be expected, and it just shows you that your baby's growing and doing well in there. So I had a feeling it was another boy, like right off the bat, because I was just as sick with my son when I was first pregnant with him, and now this second son super sick. But other than that, it kind of went away around right around 12 weeks, I want to say, 11 weeks, and I felt much better. So it's tolerable, and I have tips for that too. Around 20 weeks with my ultrasound for, excuse me, <laughs> pregnant, um, ultrasound for uh, the anatomy scan. They said everything looked good, but obviously sonographers can't really tell you things that they see. And um, she was spending a lot of time at the bottom of my uterus. I have an anterior placenta, which means my placent is on top this time, which was different than last time. And took a couple pictures downstairs and then sent it off to my doctor. I didn't think anything of it. Around like 22 weeks, I got a voicemail that said, um, there's a possible vasa previa that we're seeing in your, in your ultrasound scan. We'd like you to go see a specialist to confirm that that's what it is. And that's um, not a fun voicemail to get because I had no idea what vasa previa was not a voicemail you really want to get while you're at work. I'm a teacher, um, but they have to keep you informed. So my doctor at the time sent me to a specialist who did a follow-up ultrasound um, and they did find that I have vasa previa with this pregnancy. 
And that means that I'm totally healthy, baby is totally healthy. In that regard, everything is totally safe. Hopefully it stays that way. However, um, your umbilical cord usually has all of the fetal blood vessels and cords within it. Mine do not, they kind of float at the bottom and are exposed. So his fetal cords are exposed right above my cervix. And so you cannot go into labor on your own. If you do, it's obvious that that would be super dangerous for the baby and not um, positive. So plan C-section was new for me. I did not have a C-section with my last child. So that was something to take in. And then right around, I wanna say 24, 20, yeah, 24 weeks is when they told me that it was vasoprevia and to go on immediate bed rest. Bed rest is something new that I definitely wanna talk about more in depth, maybe in another video, just for like tips and advice, because I think a lot of times when I first heard about someone being on bed rest, I was like, oh cool, they can be at home watching videos, like laying in bed, relaxing. That sounds nice, especially when you're like a full-time employee somewhere working or full-time mom you're like wow I get to like rest and lay in bed cool but there's a lot involved with bed rest it's not as it sounds so I'll share a little bit more about that but again another video probably specifically for at home bed rest which is modified and then I will be going into the hospital so around 24 25 weeks is when I confirmed the visa previa I was put on bed rest luckily the place that I teach currently is okay with me working from home that's a first blessing that happened. And then I'm around 29, gonna be 30 on Thursday. So I'm 20, 29 weeks long, which is you know about five weeks, give or take, that I've been at home on modified bed rest. So kind of a long time if you think about it day to day. Um, I do have a toddler, he's two. And so I've needed a lot of help from my husband, obviously, and then also from my mom and from family because I can't, lift anything over five pounds in my form of visa previa. I'm not allowed to stand for more than like making a quick meal five minutes at a time. I do have to sit in the shower. So I've had to get a medical shower chair, um, a wheelchair for if I've had to go out in public, which they really wanted to limit. So it's really just for like doctor's appointments. They did allow me at first to go out to dinner for Thanksgiving, as long as I was in a wheelchair and not moving but they suggested that I don't do anything else, like not go get a coffee, not drive myself anywhere other than doctor's appointments. So been at home, it's been actually nice because I've been able to go outside sometimes with my husband and my son, watch him play, take little naps, like take the time that I wouldn't have had otherwise to just enjoy this pregnancy and relax. However, the element of visa previa has made it really hard sometimes to relax because you're worried. Um, so today is New Year's Eve 2022, and I find out on January 5th um, when I'll be going into the hospital. So I've been seeing a specialist instead of my doctor. I had to switch care because I have to be at a level three hospital in case something happens to baby after C-section, like a blood transfusion or anything that would help him. So I don't want to make that sound scary. It's just stuff that would help him or myself. We have to be in the right place. If he needs to have NICU time, if he comes earlier than expected and needs to have NICU time, he would also need to be at a level three hospital. So those were things that weren't possible with my previous doctor, so I had to switch care. Um, between 30 to 32 weeks is when they were saying I might go into the hospital, but again, I find out on Thursday when I'll actually be going into the hospital. So I thought this would be fun to film and then kind of see the progression of how things go with that and give advice and hopefully, again, encouragement. I might uh, do a video for what to pack for the hospital, depending on if I think I packed well or not, or if anything was missing. I am excited though um, for getting to catch up on shows and stuff, which just is something that you can't do when you have a newborn, unless they're like napping or sleeping and you know, with a toddler and everything. It's just maybe a blessing in disguise to get this rest full time. So I'm gonna take advantage of it as much as I can. Mentally, it's hard. I really like being an active person. I like to run to the store. I like to pick out my groceries. I like to make dinner. I like to bathe my son. And I like to be a super involved parent. But so does my husband, which is a huge blessing because I can't do those things right now. I'm not going to reach over for this book over here, but it's a Colleen Hoover book my sister got me for Christmas. I don't know what it's about yet, but I love Colleen Hoover. If you haven't read, um, it starts with us and it ends with us. I think it ends with us as first and then it starts with us as the 
sequel. Super good, juicy. Verity was super crazy and juicy, so I'm excited to read that. Um, I found a Bible scripture um, little book that you can doodle in and draw in with colored pencils. So I ordered that for the hospital. I ordered like cozy socks on Amazon. I ordered stretchy underpants on Amazon. Um, I ordered extra pajamas, just certain things I switched luckily, which was a blessing before Christmas. And I was able to ask people to consider helping with those things instead of like just gifts that we don't necessarily always need. Um, so my family helped me get a couple things for the hospital, which has been really nice. I do have people that have offered to come visit me when I'm there too. I think it was very shocking at first to hear that I might or might not get to have um, visitors because COVID is still happening in 2022 to 2023. Um, for toddlers too, it's RSV season. It is currently, um, well, it's New Year's Eve, but it's gonna be January, 2023. And so RSV season is really big right now all around the United States and the world. And so my son who is two might not get to visit, but I do know that they said maybe, so I don't wanna put him at risk at all. And so I'm just mentally preparing for like FaceTiming him. I could be in there anywhere from the day that I see my doctor on January 5th, which I would be 30 weeks, all the way till 37 weeks. Um, they won't let me go past that. I did hear that it's possible anywhere from 34 to 37 weeks to have your C-section. Just depends on the monitoring that they do of baby, how everything is looking with the um, cords being exposed. Just like a lot more involved with why you would wanna take the baby out a little bit earlier and possible NICU time. So I just want to be like mentally prepared for that and then just be open to whatever my doctors and nurses um, that are taking care of me suggest. Um, one in 5,000 people have uh, this form of vasa previa where the fetal cords are exposed. So I feel like it's nice if it happens to someone else to have an encouraging, um, uplifting video that doesn't scare them and more so sees that someone else has been through it and came out on the other side positively. So that's what I pray for and that's what I'm hoping for personally. Is it stressful? Yes. Do I wanna focus on that? No, I don't think that's healthy for me or for the baby. I will definitely do the trimester tips video for first trimester, second, third. If I feel like I wanna do an all together, I might just do that too, which is different than last time. But I do have some tips of those things. Uh, possible NICU time. Again, I'm just gonna kind of be prepared for that. I do have cute little outfits ready for the baby that I'll show in a video at some point. God willing, everything goes well and baby will be healthy and happy and safe. And I can't wait to show him and how he's doing in the hospital with mommy. Yeah, and just like living in the hospital is different. I feel like I definitely have to double up on the snacks. Being pregnant is a trip because you're like starving and then you're not hungry and then it's like 2 a.m. and you're like, Ooh, I'm gonna get sick because I need some crackers. So I'm trying to think about snacks. That's kind of on my radar currently. Other than that, I have plenty of like underwear, jammies, t-shirts, comfy pants, stuff that you can be in the hospital in. Um, I have these like foamy, I think they're called cloud shoes that are just like slides. Um, they're pretty popular. So you probably know what they are, but cloud shoes are gonna be helpful to me. I'll probably list a couple things below that I've already purchased for the hospital in case that's something that you're interested in. And then when I do like a full hospital packing bag recap, I'll put what I actually brought and how that's going for me. Um, yeah, and then just kind of take you along in this journey with us. So my baby boy is doing good in there. A lot of these are showing that he's a boy, which is funny. Um, but he's doing good and Brayden's happy and I'm happy that he's doing good in there. I feel him kick. We do our kick counts quite often. So um, it's like every two hours count to 10 kicks or something like that. So that's what I've been doing. And he kicks pretty hard. So I lay on my side to just kind of like hope everything's going well in there. Um, I take my prenatals that I took in my first pregnancy, which I love. The vitamin code raw prenatals. I'll list those below. They don't make me sick, but you do take them three times a day. They're flavorless and I love them. Yeah, and I'm just really grateful to God that I'm really healthy. I passed my um, all my tests so far, blood tests, um, the sugar, what is it? 
glucose test, I got like a 71, which they said is super good and unheard of. And so that was nice because I eat carbs. So I try to avoid a lot of sugar, but carbs are sugar. So anyway, I'm just really grateful to God that I'm doing good so far. Baby's good. Hopefully we can keep it that way in the hospital. I'll take you along with me as I live there at the hospital, which is really crazy. But again, I'm just trying to be positive about it and pray. So another belly shot. And uh, yeah, I'm just glad he's growing and doing good in there. So thank you for hanging out with me. I look forward to share more tips with you, more videos with you. I obviously will have the time to do these kind of things. So I'm excited for that. And I just hope that people that have vasoprevia or have to live in the hospital on bed rest, whether it's for pregnancy or not, um, just feel like they're not alone. And there's a lot of fun ways to make it um, a valuable time with yourself. So I'm trying to switch my mindset currently for that because why not make the most of it if you have to do it anyway and not be sad about it? I've been doing a lot of crying though, I have to be honest. And um, I think that's normal, especially with hormones and being pregnant and being worried. Um, but I just wanna put a lot of faith and trust in the Lord that everything's gonna go well. And thank God I have a husband who's supportive, a great dad, takes really good care of my son with us. Um, my mom helps out a ton, my sister. I have lots of friends that wanna stop by, so. Yeah, I'm just feeling really good about it currently and I hope it stays that way. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm super excited to share more and we'll see you in my next one. Hello, Ramona. I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond the ghost. We stand on the opposite shore. Hello, Ramona.